What if I told you that there exists a data set that could unlock forest conservation for tens of millions of hectares across the U.S. alone? What if I told you that this data set was being collected by the U.S. federal government at a cost of almost $100 million a year, but that this data set was being kept a secret away from people who actually practice forest conservation in the hands of a select few government bureaucrats, a couple of academics, and people who happen to rub shoulders with the right people in the federal government. What if I told you that this data set is being kept at a level of secrecy that is on par with Ukrainian tank movements? It is immune to freedom of information requests, and it is written into law that the majority of this data set needs to remain a secret entirely at the behest of big timber in the United States. That's the situation that we face with the U.S. Forest Service's Forest Inventory and Analysis Program, or FIA. But in order to get the proper amount of MAD, let's take a step back and see what it is that we could do with this data. Now, obviously, I work in forest conservation. I work in carbon. In the forest conservation world, the only way right now that you can conserve a forest and earn carbon credits for it is to go out and hand measure thousands of trees in that forest. And that involves flying people across the country, keep putting them up on a hotel for weeks at a time, and sending them into the woods to hand measure thousands and thousands of trees. Now, if I only own 100 acres of land, it makes no sense for me financially to actually go through this effort. And so we have a situation where the process is so tedious and manual that the majority of landowners in the United States, some 11 million landowners, are locked out of the markets. You don't even break even on forest carbon unless you own 2,000 acres of land. Fortunately, there's a solution out there because we have technologies using satellites and drones and aircraft that can measure forest carbon just as accurately as hand measuring the trees. These have been demonstrated for decades in academia. The entire timber industry, all the major timber players have their own internal LIDAR program in which they're taking forest inventories using LIDAR. Here's the problem. As with any machine learning technique, if you want to actually create these models, you need a set of label data. So these models work very similarly to self-driving cars, right? They're scanning the space and then they're making a prediction of what, what is in that area. And just like in self-driving cars, how you need to have like humans label, you know, where, where traffic lights are and stuff in order to train the computer to detect traffic lights, you need to have humans basically go and measure trees in order for, to train the computer to detect trees. And so, the big timber you know, companies out there and a lot of academics, they're able to do this because they have access to huge data sets. But the carbon world, forest conservationists, smaller timber companies are all people who are locked out of being able to use this technology because they don't have access to data. Data is the new oil, right? So in order to really use these models you know, to be protecting the forest, we need an investment of millions of dollars, and we, we need access to, to thousands and thousands of plots across the landscape. Well, fortunately, somebody's already been doing that. The U.S. Forest Service's FIA program has been measuring 17,000 plots for the past 30 years across the entire United States. 17,000. The entire program costs almost $100 million a year in order to operate. And they send thousands, if not tens of thousands, of, you know, basically forest undergrads out there to measure the plots every single year. This is an enormous program. You know, it compares to the budgets of certain space agencies out there. This is an, a monumental scientific achievement. To have measured 17,000 plots for the past 30 years, we have data on what has happened to those forests. We have data on mortality, on growth, on, you know, site quality. We have all this biometric information that we could be using to predict not only how much carbon there is, but everything you'd want to know about where the U.S. forests are headed, what with climate change. Here's the catch, though. All of those plots are hidden from the public. They will give you the data for those plots. They'll tell you the county that those plots are in, but the actual locations of those plots are being obscured and are hidden from the public view. Yes? I need to see the following documents. They're listed as permission only. You can have that one. And the reason behind that is that 30 years ago, when this program was initially started, it had to go through Congress. It had to go through the, the Ag Bill in the 1990s. And what happened there was that 
private landowners got up in arms and said, hey, if you're sending government goons to measure the trees on our land, we're not going to let that happen unless you don't tell anybody where you've actually measured the trees. And so 30 years ago, before climate change was really even a thing, uh, the timber industry in the United States stepped in and forced the U.S. federal government to write into the ag bill that the plot locations could not be shared. And guess who co-sponsored the bill? None other than a young Jeffrey Epstein. Here we are 30 years later. I don't know if those objections still exist with timber companies. I mean, why would a timber company object for somebody to know how many trees they have on their forest if the whole world already has Google Earth imagery? I mean, we, are, we can already look into, into the forest landscape of, of your ownership, right? So I don't even know if those objections still exist. But what still does exist is this stipulation in the U.S. Ag Bill. Absolutely the world's greatest forest inventory data set, if not one of the greatest climate change data sets, uh, is, is being kept a secret. And so now let's talk about who has access to these plots. Uh, obviously the federal government has access to these plots. And so, you know, what you'll see people doing is you'll see people in the U.S. Forest Service publishing papers and data and kind of benefiting in that in their personal careers by having access to these plots. If you're in academia, if you happen to work at a university, you can get access to these plots. Now, it's not always easy. As a master's student, I was told that it, there is absolutely no point in trying to jump through the bureaucratic hoops of getting these plots because my master's program would have been over by the time that it, they were actually already issued. But if you're a PhD student, if you're a professor, then you can get access to these plots once you jump through a series of bureaucratic hurdles. However, that leaves a lot of us still on the outside. Because academia, you know, we're not supposed to advocate for forest conservation. Science is supposed to be pure and neutral and just measure what's happening. So a lot, the best forest conservation organizations, you know, nonprofits or, you know, for-profit companies, we don't necessarily, we don't have any access to this, this plot data. But it gets worse. Because, you know, when you have such an incredible data set like this that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars, the fact is, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure for people to get access to them. And so there are people out there who are making a profit off of making maps using these forest inventory plots. I can tell you with absolute certainty. And the only reason that they have access to them is they've rubbed shoulders with the right people in the federal government. You know, we're talking about like banana republic levels of corruption here. I will also say, you know... There, there, there is just an inherent black market for these plots, right? Like, you know, you're spreading them out to a certain number of academics. They're that valuable. People trade them around. And so we have a situation where, you know, you basically either have to rub shoulders with the right people in the federal government, or you have to steal them, some sort of underhanded tactics in order to get access to the world's greatest climate change data set. You know, one of the things that also bugs me about this data set is that the U.S. Forest Service has been acting as a, an advisor for the last 30 years to other nations in the world who want to create their own data sets. And so they send out advisors like, you know, the U.S. military does that basically consults people with how to create their own forest inventory programs. And they have managed to convince several other countries on Earth to also be secretive about their forest plots. And it's very upsetting because we have this global data set that is unparalleled and it's inaccessible to a lot of scientists and academics. You know, even as an American scientist, I couldn't get access to the French National Forest Inventory. And let me tell you something, it's not just the National Forest Inventory of France. France spans the globe. And so what we created here is a, is a system of squirreling data away. And it's all back to the 1998 Farm Bill. And, and what's more, we don't even, it wouldn't necessarily just have to be used as trading data for some company that was trying to issue carbon credits. It could be used as a global standard for evaluating how good your models are. If you were to use these plots and create a model, you could then post your model and, and, and show the world, okay, validated off these plots, our model isn't, isn't bupkis. There are just hundreds, if not thousands of scientific applications that we could be doing with these plots. Now, I want to get into the weeds a little bit. The way that the U.S. Forest Service releases this data is by fuzzing the plot locations and basically like throwing them off in a quasi-random direction and then giving you fake locations for each plot. 
People often ask me, data scientists who are kind of unfamiliar with this field often ask me, is there anything that I can do? And let me just say, the method that they used to fuzz their plot locations is quite fascinating. It's, a, it's an interesting cryptographic problem because, you know, they used a Gaussian distribution that basically puts a ring around the initial plot location and gives it a probability of, of, of falling within somewhere on that ring. And so it's not just quite random. There's actually a, a higher likelihood of it falling a kilometer away than there is it falling 100 meters away. And so algorithmically, we can cal actually back calculate the, the method they used to fuzz these plots. And we can create probability maps of where maybe the plots would have initially have been. I would never advocate breaking the law. But it's a fascinating cryptographic problem because we have a lot of information about these plots. Like I said, we have elevation, we have topography, we have slope and aspects, we have the heights of the trees. And so, you know, uh, I wonder if there, if there are specialists out there who could take the Now, this is upsetting, but, you know, it gets even worse because, you know, while the U.S. Ag Bill is an act of Congress and it put into writing that these plots cannot be released to the public unless there's another act of Congress and unless the next Ag Bill erases that little stipulation, uh, there are many plots. There are still thousands and thousands of plots across the United States that the U.S. Forest Service could be releasing to us. And that is plots on public land. Because the U.S. Ag Bill, there's nothing in there specifically that says that they can't release plot data on, on U.S. Forest Service land or on, on park land. And so you could even envision something like a third of the plots out there being released to the public so that we could then use them for forest conservation. But the U.S. Forest Service doesn't do it. And, and I'm not really sure why they don't do it. Their excuse for it is that they were afraid that if they put the plot locations out there, that people will go and vandalize the plots, that somebody's going to trek 10 kilometers into the woods and, and go kick sticks and like knock down the trees or something. Let me explain why that is an incredibly absurd proposition. First, there are plot data sets that are public and available. The United States is not a monolithic country. You know, there are countries out there that have national forest inventory programs that are public with the disclosure of their plot locations. Kudos to Brazil, kudos to Mexico, kudos to Canada for telling us where your forest inventory plots actually are so that we can use them for forest conservation. Guess what? Nobody's gone out and vandalized plot sites. The second big reason why this is a bullshit excuse is that even within the United States, there are thousands of individual little organizations that are public with their plots. So, you know, in my neck of the woods, the Penobscot Experimental Forest tells you where hundreds of its forest inventory plots are in central Maine. You know, the California State Forest System is completely transparent about where their plots are in their state forests. Over and over again, you see people who are public with their scientific data, and I have never once heard of a forest inventory plot being destroyed. And so the U.S. Forest Service today could, could release something like a third of the best forest inventory system on the planet with a snap of a finger. And so this being kept in mind, I urge you to contact the U.S. Forest Service's FIA program. I urge you to contact your local regional representatives at the FIA regional offices, uh, and I'll post a link to that right now. I urge you to contact Greg Reams, who is in charge of the U.S. Forest Service FIA program. Beyond that, I urge you to pester the U.S. Forest Service and the USDA, who the U.S. Forest Service is under, uh, just in general. So reach out to their, their, their agencies, reach out to their Twitter accounts, reach out to their contact forms, and ask them politely to free what FIA data they can. And then beyond that, we need the rest of these plots to be made public, because we don't just want plots on public land, we want plots that represent the entire U.S. forest. Contact your congressman and tell them in the next Ag Bill to correct the mistake that was made in the 1998 Farm Bill. Tell them to make the U.S. Forest Service FIA plot data publicly available. Make their locations known to everybody who wants access to them. If they're a Democratic congressman, make the point that we need these plots in order to unlock forest conservation as a meaningful exercise for millions of small Americans. Make the point that this will help the Biden administration's goals of reducing the U.S. emissions by 40 percent. Make the point that this is an invaluable data set that master's students, that people who are not in academia need to be able to use in order to actually determine how much carbon the U.S. forests are actually storing.
if this is a Republican congressman that you're pointing out to, I want you to make a series of secondary points. We also need to point out that small businesses are being stifled by the federal government collecting this data and doling it out to those that they deem worthy. Make the point that the federal government is using their data set to play favorites with certain private companies. Make the point that there's an entire exploding industry of geospatial intelligence that's being hampered right now by the federal government's hesitation to share data that the U.S. taxpayer is paying for. Make the point that for a small timber company to compete with massive timber companies that already have data sets of their own internally, the only way for them to do so, to compete on a fair playing field with data, is for the U.S. federal government to release this data. So uh, I don't think I can necessarily start a movement, but I'm going to start a hashtag, and it's hashtag free the FIA.